Aloha, aloha, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul connecting with you today on a Thursday. Pretty close to wrapping up this February. I think it's 23rd or 24th. And it is the last day of this week in which I connect and serve everyone with this week's podcast. And today, for those that are just scrolling through, today I'm going to be focusing on some sharing from a book that has actually not reached full publication yet. Got an early copy of it. And it is called Tao Science. The Science and Wisdom practice and creation of grand unification and so I'll be sharing things directly from uh, writings in this book and then contemplating on them with you so that we all have a better understanding one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is uh, the co-author of this book Dr. Master Ulin who is a doctor a physicist has worked directly with Master Shaw in writing this book she will be in uh, Hawaii. She is in Hawaii actually right now. And she will be doing a weekend workshop on finances, specifically their relationship to Tao science and flourishing. So as a physicist, she, over this weekend event, will share a lot about creation, manifestation, using the perspectives of the spirituality and tying them in with the understandings of science. Because there has been a great lack of understanding from the scientific perspective uh, and the connectivity to the spiritual world. And so she helps draw these conclusions using her physicist mind and then bringing it down into a very um, easy to understand, easy to digest method. So I'm I have no idea exactly what she's going to cover and she is the guru in this. I'm just going to be sharing with you some of the insights from this book that will come to be published in about another month or two from what I understand. And it will be a blockbuster in many ways because it will assist with people awakening in the scientific communities and in those left brain communities where they have difficulty uh, combining the spiritual world and the physical world. This book will bring a lot of hearts and souls together. So that's what you can expect. I hope you stick around uh, for those that are just trimming through and not sure if they want to stay or not. Um, if you need to leave, if it's in your agenda where you have to go and you can't stay, but you'd like to know more, then please like and subscribe on my uh, Facebook page and then you can always come back to my page and scroll back through. And I will... I will uh, accept you as a friend of course and so um, that's what you can expect so this week we've had some great information yesterday was uh, some very deep but important information on what keeps us from having oneness individually in a group and in this world what are the the real underlying reason and one of the things that was shared in yesterday's live stream was that it that about and this is a, a synopsis that about uh, up to 97% of humanity actually want the same thing. We all want peace. We want love. We want harmony. 97%. But when you look around the world, why do we not have that? And what was revealed yesterday is not that we don't all want the same thing. It's that we are unable to move from where we're at to that place because of all of the extraneous things all around us pushing upon us to stay in a separation mindset and a separation thinking and a separation attitudes and beliefs and separation words even our thoughts are separative because we think something judgmental or critical or we have an opinion a strong opinion on uh, something that is right or even not right and it is that creates an instant division it creates separation so if you'd like to know more about that live stream because it was very deep very powerful then please also go back to yesterday's uh, postings and enjoy it so while Facebook is gathering more souls let me check in to see who's joined us so far today 
Welcome, Uma. Welcome also to Crane. Aloha and welcome, Kristen. Aloha and welcome, Kristen Strock and Anne Rojas. Welcome, Donna Boana. Aloha, Princess Lee. Welcome, Snizana. Welcome also, Stephen Smith and Diana. Aloha and welcome, Vanessa. Welcome, Lori Hayden. And aloha, Catherine. Aloha and welcome to Kate Nicole, Sherry Picard. Kristen says yesterday was very interesting and has asked me to re-examine a few opinions that she has held. Yeah, I had to also when I got that uh, awakening. <clears throat> welcome, Selena. Welcome also, Tammy Hunter. Welcome to Janice Crosby Carter. And welcome, Dan Atkinson. Aloha and welcome to, uh, Je to um, Paula Hyatt. Heather McNee, and welcome Erica, welcome Joanne Tremont, Aloha Sherry Picard, Angela, welcome Nola Curtis, welcome M.A. Drade, <coughs> welcome Christina Thorson, Jen Christie, Aloha, welcome Sima A.J., welcome Gary Dougherty, and Aloha Dan Atkinson, welcome Becky Lafave, and Aloha and welcome to Susan Manifold. Thanks you for hitting the share button. Thank you for letting other people know about this. We'll go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul while we wait for Facebook to gather a few more beings and then we'll move forward. So placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center, keeping the right hand pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes and I will invite in the beings of light. So dear our beloved divine creator, all beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including beloved Mother Earth, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. Beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Nam, Ami, Tofu, and Kuan Yin. Beloved Krishna, Ganesha, all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, Buddhas, bodhisattvas. Our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you, honor you, deeply respect you all. And thank you from our heart and soul for your presence. We thank you from our heart and soul for the things that you do for us that we are very often unaware of. How you steer us to safety, guide us away from harm, how you protect us, how you do this for our loved ones as well. We thank you for your invisible and unconditional service. We ask forgiveness for this in all lifetimes that we have done anything to bring harm or suffering to any souls. And we ask for your blessings today to bless us to more fully develop and awaken to our soul and our connection to the oneness. We ask the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony to please turn on and join us today. We ask all souls in all universes to join us to chant this Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony to offer their unconditional service to humanity and all souls. So let us chant one or two rounds, fully connect, and for those that are new, this is a mantra. This is a healing mantra. You can make a request. Let us serve. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Woi, wo shen herling. Woi, tran ran lei. Wang li hing rong, her mu sher shang. Shang ai ping. On a she, song I ping on a she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace and harmony love peace and harmony lula lula li lula lula la li lula 
So welcome also to Johnny Mambod, welcome Dan Marino, aloha and welcome to uh, Jovi, welcome also to Candy Cornet and welcome Nicole and uh, to anyone else if I missed you, forgive me, welcome, thank you for joining. Sometimes people's names actually don't pop up. Why? I'm not sure. It could be the device they're watching on, but uh, I've heard people say, yeah, I was there, I was watching and Facebook never told me. So sometimes you actually have to post before I know you're there. And oftentimes I'm off in La La Land and unable to see your post. So again, I apologize. So why did I choose this subject matter today with Tao Science? Uh, a couple caveats. There is nobody that is allowed to teach Tao Science at this point, with the exception of Master Rulin. <coughs> uh, she has co-taught with Master Francisco and Master Allen. So I am not teaching Tao Science. I will, however, be reading directly from a book and con contemplating it and commenting on it with you uh, and based on my understanding of what was just read. And that's okay. That's not teaching. So I want to say that clearly because one of the things about Dr. Master Shaw is he wants to make sure that the wisdom that is taught through the books are taught with the highest level of purity and are not um, twisted. So... And that has happened with, with, with wonderful pieces of information. The Bible and others, they get twisted over time by the human. And so Master Shah uh, uh, is very careful about who he uh, authorizes for approval to, for example, teach Tao wisdom. I have not uh, passed the test to teach any of the Tao wisdom, Tao 1 and Tao 2. Uh, and so rightfully so, I'm not allowed to teach any of that. And same thing with this. So I want to state that part clearly. Um, secondly, uh, this book that I'll be working with has actually not reached the public yet. This is the, what it looks like. It's called Tao Science. I recognize it's backwards in your uh, image there. Um, Tao Science, the science, wisdom, and practice of creation and grand unification. And so uh, it will come out in a few months, I am told. And so we got a pre-copy when I was in Belgium. So very, very blessed to get a pre-copy. I still haven't uh, found my way through the book but I'm reading it a little here and a little there as much as I'm able to. And I think you'll, you'll like where we're going today. Now, the reason I chose this subject matter today is because tomorrow, uh, Friday, has a free evening with Dr. Master Lin through our uh, Honolulu Center. Uh, it's going to be from 6 or 6.30 to 9 or 9.30, somewhere in that time frame. And keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' posts. She will put the links in there. It's complimentary, so do come. There will be a weekend event. And it is recorded, so I understand a lot of you have opposite time frames or unusual time frames. It's not equal to Hawaii, but that's okay because it's recorded and you could watch it after the fact, all right? So don't let that limit you. Um, and she'll be focusing on Tao science for flourishing money. So when I read certain parts of this, we'll tie it into that aspect and try to give you some deeper insights into it. But... Um, I can share with you when she has taught on Tao science for like relationships or Tao science for anything that she's geared it towards. Um, it, it's very, very enlightening 
I've known Master Rulin prior to uh, um, any of the major activity that she's done with Master Shah, and I've witnessed um, a, tr a dramatic uh, growth with this soul. She has went from a a person that was um, not derogatorily, but most like me and most like a lot of people, kind of self-centered, to one that is very unconditional, uh, one that. Um, had quite a bit of ego to one that is nobody's ego free but I've seen so much shift I could say she's on a, a very good track for ego freeness and um, when she first started she had very limited third eye abilities but in order for her to do a good job with these books Master Shaw kept giving her huge blessings and uplifting her awarenesses and third eye abilities. And she talks, especially in her events, about talking with, with physicists that have crossed over. Um, and, and coming to some of the greater and deeper understandings in science, one of them being the grand unification theory, she readily admits she had zero clue on how to get that answer. It is the, the holy grail of anyone in the physics world. The grand unification theory means understanding the nature of the universe from the scientific perspective. Nobody has the answer to that. So one theory that unifies all theories is the Holy Grail. And it, it was her great desire going through her, you know, PhD level schooling, but she never got there. And so Master Shah um, received the Grand Unification Theory uh, formula and gave it to her about three years before she was ready to understand it. Um, then she had to go about understanding it. And in that process, he opened up her third eye, a lot of her spiritual channels substantially. And she connected with heaven and lots of the beings of light, uh, Albert Einstein and all the other great physicists that you would not know about that have crossed over. And they just come and talk to her. And, and she has conversations with them. And then she sits down and pontificates and has basically has written formulas and can explain to other physicists in a way where they actually agree um, in a non-argument condition. Um, the the science of karma, the science of manifestation, the science of failure or success in any area of her life. From a scientific perspective, she can explain it in math and numbers and, and from their um, uh, verbiage. And that's awesome when you can do that to other physicists because they're very stuck in their mind. So to be able to have new formulas is rare in the physics world and to be able to have one that explains the workings of the universe is beyond rare and it takes somewhere between you know 10 and 100 years before you can convince everybody in that scientific community just like flat earth and round earth um, but uh, people are changing their minds now one thing I appreciate about Master Ulen as you'll read when I go through some of the reading is she's always been creation minded she's always been manifestation minded master shah's wisdom and teaching does not use the word manifestation but in Tao science she uses it she uses creationism manifestation and i'm a big fan of that because i uh, have personally witnessed and am a believer that we are self creation we, we create our future um, and we are co-creators as well and so she explains that also in very layman terms it's taken her a couple years also to, to quote, dumb it down to our language uh, instead of the very highfalutin PhD level language that is necessary for uh, those in those realms that she's also talking to. So she's actually talking to two audiences and running around the world. She's talking to audiences of the physicists and she's talking to those of us in the spiritual community, bridging the gap between religion and science, bridging the gap between spirituality and science. Uh, so it's a very, very um, important task, actually. If we're going to have oneness, we have to uh, move people from jaded mindsets and limiting mindsets to a deeper understanding that there is room for spirituality in science and it can be validated. So I'm going to be reading from about the middle of this book. I would tell you what page, but most of you don't have this. But it's on page 116. And... I chose this page by guidance. I just asked Kevin, okay, what will be of most importance in this subject matter today? They told me to go to page 117. The topic actually starts a paragraph earlier on 116. And it's called Calculation of the Grand Unified Field. That's the title. It says, Tao Wisdom tells us 
the Tao, the emptiness, is the creator and source of everyone and everything. I'll repeat. Tao wisdom explains to us that the Tao, the emptiness, is the creator and source of everyone and everything. And she explains it more, so stick with it. The grand unified field is the vibrational field of the Tao. So you've heard me speak of everything has a vibration and a frequency. That's happening in the emptiness from which everything is born that is referred to as the Tao, the source, etc. So she's not saying God because that butts up people's brains, right? She's saying the source from which everything is sprung and the word Tao, T-A-O, is the representation of that. In classical physics, emptiness is nothingness. So physics talks about emptiness. They call it nothingness. There is literally nothing in the emptiness. In quantum physics, which is different than classical physics, emptiness is no longer nothingness. In quantum physics, they refer to as vibrations and strings. And she says, vibration can emerge from, can emerge from, as well as go back into the emptiness. So imagine a big dark space, and from this big dark space, a vibration can occur and go outward. And vibrations from outward can come back into the emptiness. That's the visual she's given you. This phenomenon is called quantum fluctuation. Since there are no blockages in the emptiness, what is a blockage? A blockage is karma. In the emptiness, there is no blockage. So they call this a quantum fluctuation. Frequencies going out from the nothingness, frequencies coming back in. Since there is no blockages in the emptiness, all sorts of vibrations can appear. Just whoop, there it is. In the emptiness through quantum fluctuation. She goes on, new paragraph. A wave function is a word, it's a phrase, a wave function. It's a function of something, right? A wave function describes <clears throat> the possible vibrations or state of something. So it's like looking at something and going, okay, it's vibrating. It's a wave function. They have to measure because it's physics. So what is this function? The wave function can tell us, because they're measuring it, the information energy. What information is that frequency carrying? and the matter inside something. I'll repeat, the wave function can tell us the information, energy, and matter inside something. A renowned quantum physicist named Richard Feynman discovered that to calculate the wave function to measure it is to sum up all possible states. Let's back up. Emptiness, nothingness. Vibrations can come from it, go outward. Vibrations from the outside can go into the nothingness. That's measurable. And what she's saying is that a great physicist discovered that in order to measure that, to calculate it, it requires the sum of all possibilities. How do you sum up all possibilities? Let's read on. If you attempt to calculate the wave function of emptiness, attempt to calculate it, you will find that the emptiness contains infinite possibilities. There is no limit, infinite possibilities in emptiness. So if you attempt to measure it, it's just infinite. And physics is all about measuring, right? Remember that physics is all about measuring. infinite possibilities and infinite vibrations, infinite possibilities and infinite vibrations in the emptiness. The infinite is something so huge or so small, it cannot be counted or measured. It cannot, you just, it's too big or too small. You can't, there's no way you can wrap your physics math around it, infinite. What is the wisdom from the Tao? 
The Tao is bigger than biggest, smaller than smallest. The Tao is not round or square. It is not large or small. It cannot be measured. If you try to define the Tao, you're wrong before you even start defining it because it is indefinable. These are the spiritual teachings on what is the Tao. So now physics, she is drawing a correlation. The infinite is something so huge and so small it cannot be measured. It is bigger than biggest and smaller than smallest. Within the emptiness, there are countless information, energy, and matter. This is very important, these three words. There is countless information, energy, and matter. Countless inside the emptiness. When we think emptiness, we, we think there's nothing there. But they know, they can measure, that vibrations are coming from this nothingness, and they can measure vibrations going into it. They can measure that. And so in this emptiness, there is immeasurable information, energy, and matter. Think about that. They know that it's just not nothing sitting there. It's like looking at space. It's not nothing. There is something there, and they can see it measuring in terms of the waves. And Master Shah's teaching, soul is the carrier of message. Message is information, right? Information can be original source consciousness of love. You've heard that teaching before, where our original source consciousness carries love. You've heard the teaching of soul leads the heart, which leads the mind, which directs the energy, which moves the matter. I'll repeat, soul is originator, from which we all originated, leads the heart, which then leads the mind, which then directs the energy, which then moves the matter and adjusts the matter. And this is the order of things. It doesn't work the other way around. If you try to adjust the matter, it may impact the energy a little bit, but most of the time it doesn't. If you try to adjust the energy, it doesn't affect the mind at all. If you try to convince the mind to adjust the heart, good luck. So it only works downward in one direction, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. That's important because in the next paragraph or two. So the last sentence, within the emptiness, there are countless information, energy, and matter. So welcome Dean Forbes, welcome Candace Cheeks, welcome Siegfried, welcome Pritti, welcome Lisa Patterson, and welcome Judy Parker. Um, welcome to anybody I may have missed. Thank you for clicking on the share button, letting other people know about this. Next paragraph. Since physics studies only phenomena and matter in the observable universe, what we can see, right, what we can measure with our little instruments, physics, uh, they only work with those things that are measurable and seeable, right? Then physics deals only with the measurable, which is inherently, just because it's the nature of it, it is finite, meaning it is limited. Therefore, the infinite is one of the most challenging problems that anybody in the science world has ever run into. In fact, encountering infinity is quite a scary experience for some of the physicists. Oh my God, how do you measure infinity? Let's not go there. It makes my brain hurt, right? This is even what the physicists work with. At first, many physicists choose to ignore the infinite encountered in the emptiness. Uh, it's, yeah, it's emptiness. There's really nothing there. But she just stated there is countless messages. There is countless energy and matter. They can see. They can measure vibrations going in and out of this emptiness. So they can't really ignore it. However, they cannot shy away from the infinite. Quantum, and excuse me, the infinite and the emptiness for very long. Soon they would find in quantum physics that matter interacts, matter interacts with the emptiness. It is this interaction that can also create the emptiness. One more time. The last part was infinite, so I'll repeat it. Um, they would find in quantum physics that matter interacts with the emptiness. 
And this interaction can also create the infinite. So interaction with the emptiness is part and parcel of the creation of infinite everything. Nobel laureate Paul Dirac, new paragraph, is, is, is uh, regarded as one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century due to his mathematical brilliance. And about 20 years ago, 30, well, it's almost 40 years ago now, Paul told top string theorist Edward Witten of Princeton University that the most important challenge in physics was to get rid of infinity. <laughs> to get rid of infinity. That's the most important challenge. For many decades, quantum physicists have been baffled by how to understand and deal with that which is infinite. They just can't measure it, so they'd rather ignore it. Eventually, they developed a method called renormalization procedure to deal with this infinity problem. We will not go into any details about renormalization. We simply want to summarize what we can learn from quantum physics about Tao and the grand unification field. Welcome, Pan. So these are four bullet points. Bullet point one, emptiness has boundless information, energy and matter. That sentence was stated earlier. It's just no link, no, no uh, limit to it. Bullet point number two, welcome Christine. Emptiness has infinite soul, heart, mind, energy and matter. So think about that, in the emptiness, there is no limit to soul, no limit to heart or mind or energy and matter, zero. Third bullet point, emptiness is within everyone and everything. Whoa. Does that mean it's within you? Let's think about that. It has already been discovered long ago that no matter what, if you're knocking on the piece of plastic that makes up this screen you're watching me through, or the chair I'm sitting on, or your human body, that 99% of everything is emptiness, space. 1% is matter. 1%! This bullet point is emptiness is within everyone and everything. It's also within you. But what is within the emptiness? Incalculable possibilities incalculable energy and matter, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Remember what I said earlier about Master Ruland's teachings on creation and manifestation. We have literally within us the God field, the creator field. It's all around us as well. And infinite possibilities are present. Scientifically speaking, you've heard this before in spiritual talk, but scientifically speaking as well. Fourth bullet point, emptiness interacts with and responds to everyone and everything. Remember what she said. In the emptiness, vibrational uh, uh, frequencies were entering the emptiness and coming from the emptiness. So this emptiness is always interacting. That little field inside of us that's always there is always interacting with the frequencies from outside of us. You look at yesterday's teachings on what is separating us from love and peace and harmony in humanity. And it, and it was separation, the word was separation, and our thoughts and our judgments and our criticisms and our self-righteousness. Every time we see something that butts up against our belief system, arr, instant separation, not oneness. So that news channel that I was watching or that piece of gossip that I overheard in my right ear is a wave from a scientific perspective. It's a wave pattern. It's carrying a message, right? And that's what wave patterns do. They carry messages, energy, and matter. And it entered my space, my energetic field, the 99%. And it carried with it a frequency that rubbed up against my frequency and I reacted inappropriately to it. Inappropriately if I put it in alignment with oneness. We are constantly, as beings filled with space, in a quantum entangled universe. You've heard those words before, quantum entanglement. In its simplest understanding, 
all of these different messages are like little messages on a wave and they enter our energetic field. Do we accept them as true or not? Do we allow them to mess with us or not? Do they uh, override our positive frequencies or not? It is dependent upon what we do to support ourself in staying in the highest love and light. For many of us, we allow it to enter our field and harm us. Emptiness interacts and responds and responds to everyone and everything. Okay, so we talked about how it enters, but what about the responding part, right? We are all creators, at least that's what I've come to accept. You have your own belief system. You certainly don't have to honor mine. Uh, and based on the understandings I've come to work with, if I accept that piece of information that's negative and focused and um, intolerant and da-da-da-da, and it vibrates me and I get a little upset, naturally from my space, I am sending out a frequency and a vibe. More of that unpleasant negative vibe. So I receive it and then just because I'm irritated about it, it goes out and it impacts everybody else's space because we're all filled 99% with the space. We are all quantumly entangled, whether we like it or not. Science has validated that and that's exactly what it means. Your energies impact mine, my energies impact yours. This conversation here is impacting your, uh, your field, hopefully positively. Hopefully you're resonating with it. And if you are, then that is resonating from you, whether you even say something to somebody else, because you are maybe aligning to it. And in that alignment, you are getting higher wisdoms. And in that higher wisdom, you are expanding it outside of you. Hence, something like the hundred monkey theory. Most of you may have heard of that. Whereas when you get a certain critical mass of monkeys doing the same thing, all of a sudden other ones do it automatically. They didn't even have to see it. It's the same thing with bringing love, peace, and harmony. So when we do focus on consistent positive things, receiving consistently positive things, doing consistently positive things, we are being a interactive, proactive part of the space, the emptiness from which everything is born, from which everything is created. The emptiness, the nothingness, the Tao, the source, the creator, many different names, same understanding. Next paragraph. Therefore, the grand unification theory is indescribable. There are no numbers and no words that can express the infinite because it never stops. It's not measurable. The grand unification field does have soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Welcome, Cheryl Schoolcraft. Welcome, Michelle. The, uh, the soul of the grand unification field is boundless. She didn't say the grand unification field is boundless. She said the soul of the grand unification field is boundless. Why did she say soul? Oh, thank you, Kristen. Look at Kristen Urban's post, everybody. You can join the Tao Science Discussion community if this is something that tweaks your interest. You can have uh, like-minded discussions. So the soul of the grand union field is boundless. It contains all possibilities and all information. It is quantum entangled with everyone and everything. So literally, we are weaved throughout each other on a very real, measurable basis. They just can't measure where it begins and ends. Every thought we have expands that field. Every positive thought we have brings more of that positive frequency into that field. If we can give enough cumulative positive frequencies, we can impact the outcome of events because of our uh, collective process. The heart of the grand unification field is all-inclusive. This is important because now she's going into the soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. So she described for each section of the grand unification field, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. I'm, I'm explaining them one at a time. So remind you what the soul is. So the soul of the grand unification field is boundless. It contains all possibilities and all information. It is quantum entangled with everyone and everything. 
It has a soul, and it literally encompasses every soul in creation. It is within everything and everyone. It has the highest positive information. So that's the soul of the ground unification field. Now we're talking about the heart of it. Remember, think everything, 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 everything has soul, heart, mind, energy, matter. So now she's talking about the heart of the ground unification field. The heart of the ground unification field is all inclusive, not exclusive, not I'm right, you're wrong. The heart, it's fully open. It can receive and respond to any information from anyone and anything. The mind of the ground unification field is limitless. It can process any information instantly. The energy of the grand unification field is endless. It can never be exhausted. Think about that. An energy that can never be exhausted. It already exists. The energy of the grand Unification field is endless. It can never be exhausted. The last part is the matter. The matter is what we are most familiar with, especially third density. The matter of the unification field is beyond countless. It is bigger than biggest and smaller than smallest. Uh, every couple, five, 10, 20 years, they create a something that can see smaller. And so they say, oh my God, we thought, you know, Leptunes or Quirks was the smallest thing. Now we have to make up a new name because we see something smaller. Well, it will go infinite smaller. It already is infinite smaller to the very smallest matter, very smallest energy. We just have to have instruments that can see smaller and smaller, but it's already present. In bold print, one sentence, the grand unification field is the ultimate life source that nourishes, rejuvenates, energizes everyone and everything is the ultimate life source that nourishes, feeds us, nourishes us, rejuvenates, energizes everyone and everything. If you removed grand unification field and you said the creator is the ultimate life source that nourishes everyone and everything, God is the ultimate life source that nourishes everyone and everything, Buddha, whatever your belief system is, you just plug it in. This is written for connection between science and spirit. So this validates through measurable understandings, through acknowledgement of the infinite immeasurable, what is within that infinite immeasurability and how it impacts us. We can connect with the grand unification field. We can obtain, this is important, when we connect with this everythingness, this nothingness that is within us, without us, all around us, when we connect, we can obtain any wealth, any treasure, elixir, nectar, and much more. We can draw unlimited energy. We can gain any wisdom. Oh, you can literally learn about stuff you would have to go to college for. If you're fully connected, you could ask a question and get a clear answer. You can get answers to knowledges and secrets, as well as the supernatural powers and abilities, like the great beings of light who have come to this planet before. Levitate, walk on water, not a big deal for many of them. These are considered, from our third dimensional perspective, supernatural. They have just tapped into original creator at a higher level. They have removed mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs of limitation. They have understood the limited, the uh, lack of limitedness, the infinity of Creator. They have understood their role within that and have chosen to work with it. And of course, we see it as, whoa, impossible. How do we do that? Possible. Connecting with the grand unification field is the next stage of human evolution for the highest information, unlimited energy, and countless matter. How? So that was about two pages of a 230-page um, book. So.
So I do recommend that when it comes out, you take your time reading it. There's deep wisdom in it. And we can get so much value out of it. Welcome, Julia Abbott. But right now, we're going to practice. We're going to practice a mantra that unifies our field. Without going into deep teachings, which that does do in this book, that tie in where we are in this universal structure, I have to give you a little preface so that the mantra we chant makes sense. The mantra is called Creation Reverse Creation Mantra. And you can buy this CD from Master Shah's website. It's beautiful music. Highly recommend it. And uh, the mantra states, from one becomes two, from two becomes three. From three returns to two, two returns to one. What's a different way of looking at that from Tao science? From the original creation of oneness was born heaven and mother earth. Yin and yang, if you will. From two, all things are born, not just humans, everything. Everything, everything, everything. All thoughts, words, actions, all energy and matter, everything. Okay? Now we're in the bottom. So one, two, three. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three, three, two, one. Right? One, two, three. So we're here at the bottom of the rung. Creation's up here. We're all trying to find our way back. So the mantra is a mantra to return you back by applying higher frequencies. Remember, everything carries a, a wave vibration, which is a message. So the message is, I am acknowledging one, two, three, take me back, three, two, one. Okay? Very short explanation, goes much deeper in the previous books. So the mantra goes like this, Dao Sheng Yi. Yi Sheng Er, Er Sheng San, San Sheng Wan Wu. From one, uh, Dao is the one, Dao Sheng Yi, Dao is one. Yi Sheng Er, from one becomes two, Er Sheng Yi. From two, all things, excuse me, from two, uh, Er Sheng San, excuse me, San Sheng Wan Wu. Three includes all things. We return, the mantra is Wan Wu Gui San, Wan Wu Gui San, all things. San Gui R, return to two. R Gui Yi, return to one. Yi Gui Dao, return to Dao. Okay? I will chant it. You'll get used to it. Uh, Kristen has already posted it in her chat box, so you can follow along. It's a beautiful mantra. It's just a lot of fun to chant. And what we want to visualize is our soul returning to Dao. And one of the beautiful parts about this mantra and everything that Master Shah brings us is we can take the elevator straight up. Everyone in humanity is taking billions and billions of lifetimes to go through this big circle on the way back home. But when you follow these higher level teachings and you do the practices, you just take the elevator straight up. Okay? Now it takes practice. Okay? Instead of a billion lifetimes, it might only take 100,000, but I'd rather take the elevator than a billion lifetimes of suffering. I don't know about you. That's my path. So, this mantra moves us along that way much better. Sorry about that adjustment. Okay, let us place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. We'll connect to the mantra and we'll ask it to service. So, dear the soul of the creation, reverse creation mantra, I love you and you appreciate you. As I chant, could you please bless my soul journey, bless me to shorten my soul journey, and increase my return to the source creator with love and light. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us chant. You will hear the mantra and you'll be able to connect very easily and very quickly. Dao Sheng Yi Yi Sheng Er Er Sheng San San Sheng Wan Wu Wan Wu Gui San San Gui Ar, Ar Gui Yi, Yi Gui Dao, Dao Sheng Yi, Yi Sheng Ar, Ar Sheng San, San Sheng Wan Wu, 
，望吾归三，三归二，二归一，一归道。道生一，一生二，二生三，三生万物，万物归三，三归二，二归一。一归道，道生一，一生二。Close your eyes. Try to memorize it with your eyes closed. Visualize. 二生三，三生万物。万物归三，三归二，二归一，一归道，道生一，一生二，二生三。三生万物，万物归三，三归二，二归一，一归道，道生一。一生二，二生三，三生万物，万物归二，万物归三，三归二，二归一。一归道，道生一，一生二，二生三，三生万物，万物归三，三归二。二归一，一归道，道生一，一生二<咳>，二生三，三生万物。万物归三，三归二，二归一，一归道。Three more times， 道生一。一生二，二生三，三生万物，万物归三，三归二，二归一，一归道。道生一，一生二，二生三，三生万物，万物归三，三归二，二归一，一归道。Last one. 
Dao Shang Yi Yi Shang Ar Ar Shang San San Shang Wan Wu Wan Wu Gui San San Gui Ar Ar Gui Yi Yi Gui Dao Thank you, thank you. So if you've enjoyed that mantra, you can certainly chant it on your own. Uh, Master Shah has made a beautiful CD with it. Ah, beautiful music. You can go to his website, go to his store and find it. Um, so this is some guidance, and deeper wisdom today on the connectivity of the grand unification theory, our thoughts, words, and actions, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. How we can make a difference and its connection to uh, our creation and manifestation abilities. Um, do attend this weekend, Master Ulin's event. Uh, you can follow Kristen Rojas's link. She's posted it in there. Friday night, tomorrow night is free. Um, it is recorded, so I don't know if the free one's recorded, but definitely the, the paid event is available. And um, for the weekend, it's like 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Hawaii time. And that is definitely recorded, so you can watch it after the fact if, you're, um, if your timing is off or your opposite time zones or whatever. And it's, it's, it's Dow Science for flourishing, which means Dow Science for helping your, your financial conditions, okay? And not only that, but creating the flourishing in your life that you want. And so it's just going to be filled with so much applicable wisdom. And as I said, Master Ulen likes to teach in terms of creativity and manifestation. So... Uh, I, can, I don't doubt that there's not a single person that's watching today. They wouldn't appreciate that. The honor fees are listed when you go to the site. They're, I think they're reasonable for a full weekend if you do the whole weekend. You know, it's like $35 a day, something like that. It's, it's pretty cheap. And um, very often, even though there's wisdom that is shared, there is opportunities to receive blessings. You may or may not be able to afford that. But... Um, there is calligraphies that will be placed behind her and in the room. And you can just sit there on the live stream and trace those calligraphies and get massive blessings. So trust me when I say it's worth it. So I hope you join. You follow the links that Kristen's posted. I thank Divine Dao and Source, uh, Master Shah and Master Lin Soul, all the wisdom in these books and heaven for allowing me to serve in this way. I thank you all for your unconditional service and joining. Thank you for hitting the share button and sharing, letting other people know about this. If you're new, make sure you like and subscribe. You'll know when I go live again. I'll be back next week, Monday, as normal. So enjoy your weekend, and maybe I'll see you at the event, because I will be there, okay? Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.